participants of the Art Soul Gathering 2023. Welcome and thank you for joining me on this creative journey today. I am Tamara Laporte from Willowing Arts and it is an immense pleasure to be a part of this inspiring event. Thank you for having me, Ida. Now, allow me to introduce myself and um, offer you a tiny glimpse into my fun and joyful artistic world. So my name is Tamara Laporte, but most people call me Tam. And I am a mixed media artist, author, and online art teacher residing in the serene and beautiful countryside of the south of England. My life is enriched by my incredible husband, Andy, two amazing sons called Dylan and Elliot, four delightful dogs, and a very bunch, lively bunch of uh, hilarious chickens as well. <laughs> My artistic style can best be described as sort of mixed media folk art infused with a touch of magical realism. From whimsical children's illustrations to stylized fantasy art, my creations celebrate the boundless wonder of the natural world and the people and animals in it. Things like love, mystery, innocence, hope, spirituality, kindness and self-connection are the guiding forces behind my artwork. Through symbolism and intricate layering, I strive to convey messages of healing, inspiration, and the profound beauty found in the tapestry of life and our inner emotional world. Today for our session, we will embark on an exploration of expressive watercolor techniques to create a stunning butterfly. Now the butterfly holds a profound connection to both the divine feminine and the sacredness of nature, which is the, the, the theme of this summit. It symbolizes, the butterfly symbolizes the transformative power that resides within each of us, mirroring the delicate but awe-inspiring cycle of life. So as we dive into the creative process, we will celebrate the interconnectedness between the butterfly and the natural world. And through expressive brush strokes and vibrant colors, we will honor the divine feminine and the nurturing essence that permeates through the cycles of nature. Now, in addition to using watercolors, we will explore a few more art supplies and techniques to enrich this experience. Uh, but I have provided a PDF with a comprehensive list of supplies and materials, and I'll also discuss them in the little in, in the next part of the video as well. Now, for those of you who may feel hesitant about drawing the butterfly design, I have included a traceable file as well. Um, that you can trace, so you can trace the actual butterfly, but I'll also demonstrate how you can draw the butterfly freehand. Okay, before we get started, I'm excited to let you know about my free gift to you. I run a year-long mixed-media art course called Lifebook Every Year, which is all about creating more well-being and happiness in our lives with the support of our creativity. And for this course every year, we run a free tastery event. It is a two-week art feast that begins very, very soon. So if you click on the link below, below my session here, you can reserve your seat on the free Lifebook Tastery event, which begins very, very soon. Very exciting. I hope to see you there. Once again, I express my heartfelt gratitude for your presence here today. Together, let us celebrate the delicate beauty of the butterfly, the profound wisdom of the divine feminine, and the awe-inspiring wonders of nature. Let's get started. I can't wait to see what you do. Please tag me in the Facebook group if you upload your artwork. I can't wait to see what you do. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to see you again soon. Much love. Bye. Okay, everybody, welcome to my art desk. And let's get ready to draw and paint a beautiful, soulful, colorful butterfly like this one, right in front of me here. So before we start, I'll just go over a few art supplies to let you know what we're working with today. And also I'll talk about drawing this design. Now, if you feel a little intimidated by drawing a design like this, I have included the traceable file. But I'll also talk about how you can draw a butterfly design similar to this by hand. And yeah, so you have the option to do either way. Now, because we are time limited on a summit like this, uh, part of this session will be time lapse. It's I'd usually time lapse the art part because we don't have, uh, you know, hours and hours and hours, unfortunately, to share uh, today. But if you want to learn from me uh, in depth, please do come check out my courses on my site where all of my main courses are recorded in real time, step by step, and um, there are no uh, large parts of time lapse, just a short, short little bits of repetition, so here and there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the art supplies you'll need today. So this has been mostly done with watercolor uh, paints as well as a little bit of 
acrylic inks. Oh, and I just noticed that I hadn't put the lid on well, and that's not good, is it? Okay, anyway. Uh, some acrylic inks, but I think mostly I've been working with watercolor paints. It's a couple of days ago since I painted this painting, so just trying to recognize what it is. Uh, mostly watercolor paints. Um, currently I have a, a real obsession with watercolor paints. I love them, and I have um, several sets, but most of my art supply, most of my watercolor paints are by Schmincke, the, the, the brand Schmincke. But you do not have to use this brand at all. You can work with uh, what you have already available. So I like to work with the brand Schmincke, but you do not need this particular brand. It is though very vibrant. These colors are very vibrant. Um, that's why I love it so much. And then I've also used, I'm pretty sure, some white acrylics in this. Just some simple white acrylic acrylics paint, as well as some uh, acrylic markers, either Posca pens, um, these guys, or uh, Artistro. Any other, and some other brands do them as well. They are acrylic markers which you can write over your paint with. And actually these little um, teal spots here are also done with a marker. I don't often use um, Posca pens for spots like this, but I wanted to enhance the teal. So, I mean, it depends on what color scheme you want to work in personally, so you don't necessarily need this, but this is an optional um, supply as well that you can use. Okay, let's see, and I think that's it. You'll also need a graphite pencil to draw your original design with. You might want an eraser, and then you'll need some, of course, some brushes and water cleaner than this <laughs> to to paint your um, painting with. Um, and I, I did say um, water, uh, acrylic inks, but I think I actually used the heavy body acrylics. So that's what I've used. And then paper-wise, I like working on a hot pressed watercolor paper. My favorite brand is Saunderson Waterford, but um, I hear it's not so easy to come about in the rest of the world. This is made in England, and so it's easy for me to get, but not for everyone. Um, so you do not need this brand. Try to go for a good brand that is known, such as Taylor Rowney or Fabriano, Canson, uh, can I think of another one? Arches. Haha, <laughs> I got one. Okay, those guys. Um, just, um, I would not compromise on paper because that can really make a difference. If you've got cheap paper, you can really notice that. I like to work 16 by 12, but you could work smaller. And uh, I work on hot press, which means the page is smooth, but you can work on cold press, which makes it grainy or bumpy. Up to you entirely. Okay. So. That's uh, the supplies I think you need to know. So we don't need that many supplies actually. Um, that's nice. And for the drawing, so like I just said, we have a traceable involved. This should be a PDF um, uh, included in this offer. And But if you wanted to draw something like this by hand, the good thing, the fun thing is about butterflies is that they are actually fairly straightforward shapes to draw. And also you have so many variations that you can draw, which I always love about butterflies. Like I use butterflies quite a bit in my work. I mean, I tend to use only the wings rather than the butterfly. Well, sometimes, yeah, the wings more than the full creature. But butterflies are just so beautiful for symbolism and... They, they are so representative of beauty and lightness and transformation. So they're really wonderful little creatures to incorporate in any artwork you do. I rarely have actually made them the focal point. So I'm really pleased today that I'm actually making the butterfly the focal point. It's not, uh, it's not much, I've not done that much. So really nice. I was really enjoying painting this. All right, so let's talk about a butterfly, how to draw butterflies. So butterflies effectively are fairly, like, I mean, let's just do a very simple shape. If you've drawn before, or if you're in the, doing, if you're on an artistic creative journey, you may have done butterfly, butterflies before, and in fact, you may have done them as a child as well. Much like when we do flowers, you know, the childlike flowers, you know, those ones. I feel like many of us used to also do this. I don't know if you've done that yourself as well, you know, super simple butterfly shapes. But the fact that you can do this, that, that's really helpful if you have done that, because that is the basic shape of a butterfly. And now what we do when we go, when we draw something like this, we elaborate on the, and the elegance, we make it more delicate and we elaborate on the shape, but this is the original shape, you see. So, <laughs> let's erase that. That's to start off with, you could try and practice a couple of just butterfly 
butterfly shapes and make them super simplistic for, for starters. Really, really childlike, just so you get like loosen up a little bit um, because we don't want to get too too tight necessarily. Um, tightness and is sometimes really needed and helpful when we want to draw something super accurately, but it can also stifle us, yes? And I, I, I always try to find this balance between, okay, we want accuracy, but we don't want it to ruin our lives. <laughs> you know what I mean? So some of us, and, and, and I count myself under that, is we can get so attached to something having to look perfect that then it spoils the entire f process. It's just not fun anymore. So sometimes with both drawing and painting, I like to be playful and just do some easy shape draw uh, doodles and warm-ups and, and, uh, and so that it, it loosens us up and doesn't uh, scare us too much. Okay, so let me get my floofster. I have something called a floofster, and uh, <laughs> I love it. It's basically a makeup brush with which I can uh, floof things away. And uh, it's used not just for fun and uh, for the fact that I can use the word, but also so that when you do it on your main page, the oils of your hand, when you do this, you leave oils behind and that can interfere sometimes with the paint that you put on. Okay, now, so, so that's the basic shape. So if you wanted to make something a little bit more intricate and maybe more realistic, you don't have to, right? For this lesson, do, do this session, create your butterfly in your way. I mean, look, we can make something in between what I just did, the cute thing and the more, slightly more realistic thing. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my work, um, I like to do uh, expressive, somewhat abstracted, non, not necessarily very realistic artwork. So I don't really get attached to it having to look like a realistic creature, um, just so you're aware. Uh, but this is a really fairly realistic for my usual style. So if we were to do something similar, and we wanted to make it a little more, let's say, in between the two. So the shape of the, I find the shape of the butterfly was quite interesting because it's got, it's almost looked a little bit like a human shape. You know, if you do this, you could imagine that being the head of the the human, <laughs> and then arms could come out. You see what I mean? It looks like quite, and then here's the hips, and then here's the feet, and the, you see what I mean? So anyway, um, the, the 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 body of the butterfly looks a little similar. I feel. So it has a little head, tiny little sort of head. And then if we look at the, the reference here, these little things come out like the shoulders and then it goes in. Okay. And then it has these usually the sort of bumps for eyes here or something. Depends on how, you know, what it, how, what, how it's angled as well. I can make this little, it can make the head a little smaller. Com comparatively, the other, the, so the one that I'm using, the reference, this is actually a bit more narrow. Something like this. And then the body of a moth and a butterfly is often a little bit furry, which I found quite interesting. It has a lot of a f bit of fur. Is it fur or hair? Or, I don't know what it is on insects. Insects are such... Mm, alien to creatures, right? I find, I think, if I understand it, that insects are the most alien from us as humans. So mammals, you know, even fish, we still feel quite connected to somehow, but insects, we just go, I can't, I do not relate, <laughs> I just don't know. And I made mine a little bigger and wider. Anyway, let's leave it at that. So what I'm wanting you to take from this as well is to not be too worried about it being exactly like the reference photo. Like I said, well, let's not let's not um, be too attached to it being a, ma a really exact likeness. Okay, so then what we have really the biggest problem we always have is <laughs> with wings is to keep them a little bit uh, symmetrical, really. So if we look at the reference here, first what we can do is we can look at okay, where does the where do these wing points start? So here on these two sides, they're not even even here, do you see that? Because this butterfly that I drew is also not perfectly symmetrical, by the way. And by the way, real butterflies are not perfectly symmetrical because the, so, so these things here won't be, the, you know, it won't be perfectly symmetrical. If you did want perfect symmetry, by the way, what you could do is create half of your butterfly, trace it, and then flip it over and trace it again. You could do that, that's no problem. But if you wanted to freehand it, I wouldn't worry too much about making it perfect 
perfectly symmetrical. It's going to do your head in. Life's too short for that. Okay, so let's look at you see here that the, that that wing point starts higher than this wing point by a fraction. And then here, this wing point starts midway and is a slightly lower here. So, so we can utilize those wing points, starting points, and go, okay, so on the reference, it starts roughly here and here. I can make a thick, thickish dot. And then slightly lower, it's here and here. Something like that. And then we're going to um, start our um, wings. And this is quite fun, but so you, I find to get a nice arch going is to just use my wrist, a wrist movement. So, vroom, and you can make your wings really big or smaller or, yeah, more proportionate to uh, the reference photo. And then here we had the other one, and that's going to go. Vroom. <laughs> you have to make the noise as well, vroom and vroom. And then because I am right-handed, I might. Oh, this is another. This is another design. <laughs> for my corgi lesson, that's not for today. Uh, and then here I'm, I might uh, put it upside down so that I can do a similar-ish move and then a similar-ish move. See? Something like that. Now, it looks like she's wearing a ball, he's, he, she's wearing a, a ball gown or something. Something like this. And now I've got my two starting points for the wings. And my eraser is under here. There we go. And we're really kind of quite close now already to what we want, because that's that's a good start. Now, the tip of the wings on the side here are doing that lovely ruffled thing. And you can make them... Um, you can do... that's the thing, you can do super cool whatevers with them. Because if you look at the world of butterflies, they are far and wide. There's so many different types. You have moths, you have all kinds of shapes, of si sizes, all sorts again, as as we have with the human world and all, all animals. And um, yeah, you can do whatever you want with them. So you can kind of make up your own wings or follow something more realistic, um, follow this design here, up to you. So we're doing a ruffle and then some butterflies, not all, have this sort of typical um, thingy hanging out. I don't know what this is called. If you have ever seen a butterfly hatch, it's quite cool. You see them unfurl the, furl their wings when they stump, first come out, and then you see this. Some moths have a really long. There must be a name for that. I bet you that scientists have given it a name. Okay. And now here, we're going to do the same. And as you can see, I'm not symmetrical. I might, I might like adjust it a little bit in a moment. Not painstakingly. I'm, I'm really for not being too attached to outcome and. and um, perfection, but I do like to be happy with my design. Now, I know that that's a really fine balance for lots of people that go, well, I might never be happy with it, and I do get that too. It very much depends on where you're at in your art journey as well, but basically be kind. Go be kind with yourself and um, don't get too stressed. And also, by the way, if you do really want a very perfect uh, version of this, then and you'd want to do it by hand, you can also do something called a gridding system. You can use measurements. You can measure, you know, all of the design's points and then place all the measurements in. You know, there's all sorts of ways that you can... Um, you can draw by hand with, with sort of reference points. That's all fine. You know, do what you... do do, do what you... what serves you best. But my, but within that, try to avoid being too attached to perfection, only because that just I've just seen that ruin people's lives. Everybody, the perfection thing. Okay, right. So back here. So now we have a basic starting point. Really pretty. I like it. I can do the fur, and we can now adjust if we want. I mean, I don't. I think it's actually fairly symmetrical. I don't think like, oh my god, it's massively wonky. It's definitely, if you, if you were to fold this over, I'm sure it wouldn't line up. But not to an extent that I'm really bothered by it. So if I was really bothered by it, I might like adjust more, you know, adjust it a bit more. But I don't feel that bothered. I don't think, oh my god, really, really asymmetrical. So I think I would, I, I might like look at, oh, do I like the curve? Do I want it curvier, like a little bit more? Do I want it to flop a bit more? That sort of thing, like shape. Is this the shape that I enjoy? Is the overall thing cool? 
Oh, do I want less ruffle, maybe? Is that sort of thing that I might ask myself? Uh, might do I, might, might I like a little bit more of a tip? Like a tip sticking out? Like, might that be elegant? I don't know. Okay. But so what could have been happening here is you could have also made the wings uh, smaller or larger, slightly differently shaped. Like In this case, this wing sits at the front, but maybe we make it so that that sits at the front. There's all sorts of playful things you can do with wings in particular, because butterflies just come in all sorts of shapes and, and uh, positions, I suppose, as well. So play around with your own design if you are deciding to um, hand draw your butterfly. Okay, and then I've really enjoyed this time to bring in all the kind of lines, the kind of the, which are, as I understand it, really the original folds from when it was all curled up in its cocoon, which I think is so beautiful in a way. You know, leftover folds in a way. So that um, that is, um, I feel like really random. You know, I could do that quite randomly. I kind of just follow. Well, really, what you could do is the ruffles could be the starting point. And then you can kind of just connect lines up. So we're going to go to the to the. You're going to kind of come from here and then go into the the edge of the ruffles because that's where it would have been curled up, I suppose. And then out of there come maybe some that are connected up to each other a little bit, and then you get that typical kind of real butterfly feel. You see. And the same on the side. So, oh, oh the, my. Pencil thingy has run out. Let me see if I've got another. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that on this side as well, like that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same here, and they could be a bit, I don't know, like this. So you do a little curve, and then sort of like that. That makes it very butterfly y. <laughs> and the same at the top. And then once you've got your basic design in, you can start to refine it, you know, like make it, you can uh, erase some of your starter lines. Uh, yeah, get, a, get rid of your sketch lines or something so that you tidy it up. This is a very sketchy, sketchy, sketch, a sketchy sketch. <laughs> this is currently a very sketchy sketch. It sounds dodgy, doesn't it? This is a dodgy sketch. No, a sketchy sketch. Something like this, and there's no. I wonder if it's similar to a, a fingerprint, you know, on butterflies. The how the lines go. I think it, there's no specific rhyme or reason to it. And then, as a lovely final thing, we bring in some of the tentacles, and you can do fun things with that. You can make them super swirly, even though actually I don't think no, the tongues are swirly, aren't they? But not the. Oh, uh, make a wider, something like this, a little bit longer. Again, if we want the symmetry, we can maybe do it like this. Out and wide, I think. Right, and there we have it. Here we have our. Oh, I didn't actually do. I didn't actually do swirly um, tentacles on on this one on this design. So there we have it. Here is a way of drawing by hand a version of a butterfly. This is just a sketch. So if I this is and also done on on children's paper. So if I were to um, actually paint this one, I would tidy it up and um, you know erase my guidelines, etc., and make it as tidy as I can, and then. It's time for us to start painting the cute butterfly. Okay, so I hope this is a little helpful breakdown of how to draw a butterfly by hand and uh, you know, feel free to adjust it, like I say, go wild. You can make all sorts of cool designs uh, when it comes to butterflies. Okay, so let's get started on the painting of this beautiful, soulful butterfly. Okay, so I have now switched uh, to voiceover Tam. And, uh, well, we're going to start with a light layer. Well, I'm working in an analogous complementary color scheme. So I'm applying um, some light magentas and pinks and oranges as a, uh, a first layer, as you can see here. And I'm working loosely and expressively, and I'm working wet in wet. So if you're 
unfamiliar with watercolor, there's a technique where you apply either first a completely clear uh, layer of water and then you drop your, your paint in there, or you can start with a layer of paint and then you leave the layer wet and then you drop some other colors in. If you want to do this as well, I recommend you work analogously and that means use colors that are sitting close to each other on the color wheel so that you don't create a mix of colors that might turn out a little muddy. So oranges and pinks um, do, do mix well. Now here, I start adding uh, a little bit of a blue layer and blue and pink mix okay as well, but blue and orange don't mix so well. So I'm trying to avoid mixing the blue in with the orange because it will create like a neutral tone. So you can follow my color scheme or you can follow a different color scheme, it's up to you. I liked that this color, these colors were very vibrant and, and bright to me, so I, I loved uh, the idea of doing that. Now while I, I'm painting, as you saw just here, I am actually dropping in some splatter here as well. I am a big fan of splatters and drips and uh, messy expressive painting. It's a, it's a super fun way of creating. But so this very first layer is very much a kind of a light first wash. What you need to know about watercolor is that even though it looks quite vibrant right now, it tends to dry um, slightly less vibrantly. So it fades, uh, watercolor tends to fade as it dries. So I will um, add layers. Um, if I want to keep the vibrancy, I'll add layers on after the, the, the first layer has dried. Or while it's still wet, as you can see here, I'm already dropping in even some more pigment. But I do at some point start to dry my layers with um, a heat gun or a hairdryer. And also what you just saw me doing here is I'm using a, a small piece of tissue paper and I'm dabbing off... Um, oh, did you see that? That was actually me drying the layer. But I'm also using... I used um, tissue paper to dab off some of the, uh, the excess paint or water and that creates interesting textures as well. Anywho, so we're now on the second layer after I have thoroughly let the first layer dry and I'm basically adding an additional layer of color over the previous layer pretty much in the same areas with the same colors. But I'm also overlapping it a little bit in areas where I haven't previously done the same color for instance. Um, and that will just add interesting um, dimensions and depth to the painting. So here I'm using this kind of purple blue and adding some kind of um, details to the body as well. I'm using the tip of my brush. I'm working uh, with a round uh, watercolor brush and that has a really fine tip to, to, to sort of, I started bringing in some of that fur, fur texture there as well. And then I'm doing the second layer on the, on the top wings there with the blue and the purple. And again, I'm using my paint quite liberally. My brush strokes are quite expressive and loose. And here you can see that I'm, I'm starting to bring in a little bit of the line work for those lines. But the, the, the thing is we're going to actually end up with those lines being probably white, I think, mostly white. So I, I, I change my mind later, basically. Now here uh, I'm using a bit more magenta slash pink and start to add um, that back into the areas where I previously added the same color. And I'm basically deepening the vibrancy. Like I just said, the previous, the first layer uh, sort of faded fairly, you know, quite a bit. And so I'm like deepening the, the um, intensity of the vibrancy by adding extra layers, which is how I like working with wood color. So yeah, so I'm doing with the same with the orange, as you can see. So I, I have three main colors here, which is sort of pink, magenta, orange, uh, blue, purple, or blue, violet. Now, and again, did you see that I made, made sure that it dried in between layers? Um, so I like working wet and wet, but when I, uh, but I also deliberately dry the layers when I need to dry them. So here I'm starting to work on the background and I chose to include a little bit of teal uh, and, and, and the same kind of warmish blue, the gray or purple or blue, lavender blue, as well as the magenta in the background. And again, I just really felt like making a super expressive, very warm, wonderful kind of um, almost like the reminds you of clouds, like a, like a colorful cloud behind the butterfly. And um, and I used the splatter again. So I'm really kind of 
expressively adding a beautiful background. Now, I can imagine you might think, yeah, but won't the butterfly sort of be absorbed by the background? Well, I'm not going to make the background very vibrant. The butterfly will remain to be the focal point because you can see here, I'm, I'm, uh, the, back the background stays lighter, although I am bringing in a little bit more uh, intensity again. And here I'm doing some drips. You just order to do, all you do is hold your paper paper up when you've got some um, some of your your paint on there and just hold it up and then you can let them dry. But basically we, we, we eventually make the butterfly stand out from the background also by using markers with white and some black. So worry not about how to how to make sure that the butterfly still sort of comes off the background. That will happen. And here you see I'm really loosely applying brush strokes and splatter and it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun to work so loosely and expressively. I really, really enjoy that. It's my, one of my favorite things to do. So go wild there and don't worry too much about making sure that the butterfly um, stands, com you know, comes off the page, stands out. It will, don't worry. Okay, and I'm mixing the colors there are, like I said, uh, pretty much similar to what I used in the butterfly, but I added in some teal. And then there's orange and light and warm blues. Okay, so now a third layer on the butterfly. You see that? That's how much you have to keep uh, layering in order to kind of keep that intensity or vibrancy going. Should you want to do that? You don't have to. Ooh, and here I had a, a genius moment where I decided to splatter on teal. <laughs> and yeah, that did really make my heart very happy. Okay, I did use the acrylic inks, as you can see there. I wanted to lighten up the the, the background um, a little bit, particularly around the area of the body, like the middle part of the of the butterfly. So now here I'm using a fine liner pen. I'm starting to bring some line work to the body and the wings and all, basically all the all the shapes, all the all the all the the actual design of the butterfly. And this is what's partially going to really make the butterfly stand out. But look, even though, even without the marker or the, the fine liner, the butterfly still stands out quite clearly from the background because there's more layers on this butterfly. But the line work will also help with bringing it even further forward. This, by the way, is a, I think a Pilot or a Pentel pencil. A pen and it's a fine liner. It's got a very fine nib. I think it's an 0 0.3 or something. And I like um, those for if I want to do some thinner kind of line work. Not like the Posca pens have a fairly uh, not super thick, but still quite a thicker nib than these types of um, pens. But uh, yeah, they have thinner nibs. So just yeah, just outlining the uh, the lines, the, the, the design, and I'm also doing the fold lines with the pen. And this is going to start just really bringing some shape, bringing the original line work back. And like I said, it will really help with making the butterfly pop off the page and the background. And uh, line work is fun in the, in the sense of that I find it quite meditative and soothing. But all painting I find soothing, <laughs> like the splatter and that's not kind of fun and energizing. And this is kind of meditative and calming. It's good for the, for the, for the health, I think, for our health. Okay, so here I'm using again some more white. Oh yeah, this is all this white acrylics here. I wanted to have some highlights on the butterfly. So I'm just bringing in just a few little bits of highlights in the, the in the wing, and then eventually I know that I this this acrylic inks are great, but they can also fade a little bit. So I know that later on I'm actually using heavy bodied acrylics to intensify the white. Right now it looks fairly white, but you'll see that that fades a little bit in just a moment. So that's when I bring in the white acrylics. And here I'm using a white acrylics pen. This brand is actually Artistro, but Posca do them. I think Sharpie do them, uh, Liquitex and Arteza now do them. Most of the companies now do acrylic pens, markers rather. And as you can see, I'm kind of outlining the, the folds in the wings and the outer um, wing as well. And it really brings, I don't know, it really helps it pop off the page even more. Sometimes doing white outlining or white lining, I suppose, can really have a very effective, effective effect. <laughs> can be really effective. 
to yeah highlight things obviously and bring bring a, a particular design uh, forward. Okay, again, nice and meditative. It goes quite quick, obviously, when we do a time lapse, but this takes can take quite a little bit of time uh, in in the real time. And it is quite a nice, yeah, like I said, uh, I like line a bit like Zen when we do Zen tangles. Um, it can be nice and meditative and calming. Okay, and I I remember thinking mm, a bit too much in the body here. I want that to be a bit darker, and then I kept the highlight only in the middle of the body. So it's playing around a little bit with ideas and then um, now I'm back to the background intensifying that a bit more decided that we needed more magenta in the background but you go with your colors and choices and 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 work intuitively with this see how you what you feel like see what you think and you can add and change and add and change you can use your white acrylics to to uh, mute things back or um, and if yeah if you're overdoing it I, oh, there, there I go. I was using the, the, the heavy body acrylics. Um, yeah, the thing is, as a mixed media artist, I am not a watercolor artist. As a mixed media artist, I utilize acrylics a lot to fix any problems. If you're doing pure watercolor, then uh, sometimes things are not fixable. But in my world, everything is fixable. <laughs> uh, mixed media artists are, uh, I, f I feel like we as a group are solution focused people. <laughs> And we'll just go, of course I can fix this. I will just use gesso or I will just use this, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> so what white acrylics are your friend in this case? And if you feel like you've overdone it, use some white to mute something back. No problem. Okay, I brought back some orange there, as you can see. I, I remember enjoying that. And here I want to bring in some kind of higher contrast shading. So closer to the body, I'm using some of the blue purple. And just close to the body, bringing a bit of shading so that it gives it a bit more three dimensionality. And bringing some of that dark in, in some of the areas of the butterfly wings as well. So we're getting there. Um, nearly done. And it's starting to shape up and look nice. So it's starting to, yeah. And then I put some of those darker splatters in the background as well. So festive and just so celebratory. I like how this really celebrates the butterfly, or so it feels to me. Like this beautiful creature, just really being focused on and celebrated. Okay, so I'm redoing these white lines. Oh, outer, yeah, on the outer butterfly, I wanted the outlining to be stronger so that the butterfly again popped up, the f popped up, popped off the page even more. So I worked on that a little bit more. And um, you can also do that with black, by the way, that will also make it stand out. Um, I just find sometimes with white, it gives almost a sense of a glow around it. And you can try it without and see what you think. Like all these um, processes, techniques and ideas can be modified and changed and played with. And then suddenly you discover something super cool and you think, hey, I'm going to do that. And then that becomes part of your style. But yeah, the white outlining is quite cool. It works quite nicely. Like a sort of either a reflection or a glow. Now, while we're outlining, I will sing you a song. <laughs> I have nothing to, to add to explain here. <laughs> I'm thinking, are there songs about butterflies? I can't remember any. Mm, can't, then nothing comes to mind. I can th I can think of one about rainbows that comes to mind, but huh. all right, I will instead just um, keep talking <laughs> or keep what is it twittering? Twitter. We're nearly done with the white now, and then I think we're nearly done anyway. We're almost done with this painting. I think I eventually change a little bit more on the butterfly body. I think I lighten up the head a little bit. It looked a little dark, but do you see how it makes slowly but surely it becomes more and more. I don't know, something alive with these white, these white lines. There we go. I think we're nearly done. Oh yeah, so the other thing I do with my Posca pens here is I, or my uh, Artistro pen, I add some little doodles and sparkles, very targeted, not, not loose splatters, and uh, little star shapes or little circles to the wings. Um, I love adding doodles to my designs like stars and hearts and <clears throat> little, little 
you know, specific dots. That's a nice little detail that I love doing. As you can see here, I, add, I also add them to the background. They're almost like little fairy dust to me. Little sparkly fairy dust. Confetti! The whole thing feels like confetti as well. I now need to... I want to know if there's a song about butterflies now. <laughs> Gonna look that up. Alright, I think I'm on the final touches now. So I'm bringing out... This is a black pen, back pen again. Marker, and I'm kind of enhancing the um, shadow in the, in the very crevices near the body. Oh, and here it was actually a Sharpie uh, pen, not a... <laughs> a Sharpie pen that won't sharpen, and my camera won't focus on it. <laughs> there we go. I could edit that out, but it's quite comical to see. These are the the foibles... No, is it the word foible? The troubles of the um, editor. The uh, the camera, the video, the video editor. I'll leave it in for, for humour. Okay, so just Sharpie, I didn't use that Posca pen, but anyway, like a, a, a um, acrylic marker of some sort, I used to enhance these little teal dots. I thought they were just a really nice little pop on the on the page, on the on the wings as well. Teal is one of my favorite colors, teal and magenta and orange. They're all in there. <laughs> I'm so predictable. Oh well. Here we go, and this is pretty much uh, nearly the end now. And uh, yeah, I love how it came out. I think, I, like I said, I think I just fixed the body a little bit and then we're done. So I hope you enjoyed creating a butterfly with me, Tamara Laporte from Willowing Arts. And uh, I can't wait to see what you do. Please um, tag me in the Facebook group if you upload your butterfly. And because uh, I'd love to see what you do in response to my sessions. And I hope you enjoyed your time with me today and on the rest of this of IDAS, IDAS Summit. And um, yeah, thank you again for joining me. And I hope to see you again soon or in some other places. Here we go. Here we go. Some a beautiful, a colorful, soulful butterfly. Ta-da! Okay, thank you for watching. Goodbye.